Hello and welcome to Panacea Tutor. This video is all about women entrepreneurship. In this golden age of globalization, digitalization and startup booms, India is clearly seeing a revolution vis-a-vis -vis women entrepreneurs. The sixth economic census released by Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation highlights that women constitute around 14% of the total entrepreneurship in India. Today's women entrepreneurs do not come only from the established business families or from the higher income sections of the population. They come from all walks of life and from all parts of the country. From running sports media firms to construction companies and security and detective agencies, women are dabbling into fields that have traditionally been passions of male domination. Now, what underlies the concept of women entrepreneurship? The woman or a group of women who initiate, organize and operate a business enterprise is known as women entrepreneur. A women entrepreneur has to perform all the activities involved in establishing an enterprise. These include idea generation and screening, determination of objectives, project preparation, product analysis, etc. The characteristics of a women entrepreneur are management and control. A woman or a group of women manages the whole business of enterprise. She prepares various plans and executes them under her own supervision and control. Risk taking. Risk means uncertainty. A woman entrepreneur takes calculated risk. She faces uncertainty confidently and assumes risk. Next point, good organizer. The most critical skill required for industrial development is the ability of building a sound organization. A woman entrepreneur assembles, coordinates, organizes and manages the other factors namely land, labor and capital. She obtains factors of production from the society and supplies them finished product. Next point, self-confidence. It is essential to be a self-confident for a woman entrepreneur. She should have faith in herself and in her abilities. She should have the confidence to implement the change and overcome any resistance to change. Decision maker. The main function of a woman entrepreneur is to make decision. She takes various decisions regarding the activities of her enterprise. She decides about the type of business to be done and the way of doing it. A woman entrepreneur must be clear and creative in decision making process. Visionary. A woman entrepreneur is one who incubates new ideas, starts her enterprise with these ideas and provides added value to society based on their independent initiative. Optimistic. A woman entrepreneur must be optimistic. She should approach her venture with the hope of success and optimistic attitude. She attempts her task with the optimistic approach for success rather than with the fear of failure. The positive thinking of a women entrepreneur can turn the situation favorable to her. Technically competent, the success of an enterprise largely depends upon the ability of women entrepreneur to cope with latest technology. Technical competency refers to the ability to devise and use the better ways of producing and marketing goods and services. Leadership. Leadership quality is one of the most important characteristics of a woman entrepreneur. It is the process of influencing and supporting others to work enthusiastically towards achieving objectives. Now moving forward to functions, like a male entrepreneur, a woman entrepreneur has to perform all these functions, entrepreneurial, promotional, commercial and managerial. Let's discuss them in detail. First of all, entrepreneurial functions include innovation. A woman entrepreneur has to introduce new product, create new markets and undertake application of new process of production, 
discovery of new and better sources of raw materials and develop a new and better form of industrial organization. Risk taking, it refers to take the responsibility for loss that may occur due to unforeseen contingency of the future. A women entrepreneur visualizes opportunities for introducing new ideas and handles economic uncertainty. Organization building, it refers to bring together the various factors of production. She alone decides the lines of business to expand and capital to employ. Coming to the next, promotional functions, they basically include the functions that are performed even before the business is set up. First, discovery of an idea. The first promotional function of an entrepreneur is the conception of a new idea. A woman entrepreneur visualizes that there are opportunities for a particular type of business and it can be profitably run. The idea may be to exploit a new area of natural resources or more profitable ventures in an existing line of business. Detailed investigation. The woman entrepreneur will estimate the total demand for the product. After determining the prospective demand for goods, she will think of arranging finances for the venture. Assembling the requirements. After making sure that the proposition is practical and profitable, the woman entrepreneur proceeds to assemble the requirements. She persuades to select the factory site, decides the plant and machinery, and contacts suppliers of raw materials, etc. Financing the proposition. The woman entrepreneur decides about the capital structure of the enterprise. The requirements of finances are estimated first to know how much funds are required to initiate as well as run the business. The financial requirements for short period and long period are estimated separately. Managerial functions constitute all the functions that a manager performs. They are planning. It is the basic managerial function of woman entrepreneur. Planning helps her in determining the course of action to be followed for achieving various entrepreneurial objectives. Next, organizing. The function of organizing is to arrange, guide, coordinate, direct, and control the activities of other factors of production, that is men, material, money, and machines, so as to accomplish the objectives of the enterprise. Staffing. Every woman entrepreneur has to perform the function of staffing, which includes manpower owning, recruitment, selection, training, placement of manpower, development, promotion, transfer, and appraisal, and determination of employee remuneration. Next, directing. It is concerned with carrying out the desired plans. Next comes leadership. A woman entrepreneur has to issue various orders, instructions, and guide her subordinates in their work to improve their performance and achieve enterprise objectives. Motivation. Woman entrepreneur has to provide some personal incentive to the subordinates to motivate, persuade and inspire them for contributing their best towards achievement of enterprise objectives. Supervision. It refers to the job of overseeing subordinates at work to ensure maximum use of resources to get the required and directed work done and to correct the subordinates whenever they go wrong. Coordination. It is one of the most important functions of woman entrepreneur. It creates a team spirit and helps in achieving goals through collective efforts. It is orderly arrangement of group effort to provide unity of action in the pursuit of common objectives. Last, controlling. Control is the process which enables women entrepreneur to get its policies implemented and take corrective actions if performance is not according to the predetermined standards. The last category of functions is the commercial functions that are performed when the business is running. 
First comes the production. It is the fabrication of a physical object through the use of men, materials and equipment. Finance. The need of money is continuous. It starts with setting up of an enterprise and remains at all times. It deals with estimating financial requirements, deciding structure, selecting a source of finance, proper cash management, etc. Personnel. This function of women entrepreneur is concerned with people at work and with their relationship within an organization. It aims to bring together and develop into an effective organization the men and women who make up enterprise. Now we all know a large number of problems are faced by women entrepreneurs, especially in a country like India. Some of them will be discussed in the further video. First comes the problem of finance. Now finance is regarded as lifeblood for any enterprise, be it big or small. However, women entrepreneurs suffer from shortage of finance on two counts. First, women do not generally have property on their names, so they cannot use them as collateral for obtaining funds from external sources. Thus, their access to the external sources of funds is limited. Second, the banks also consider women less creditworthy and discourage women borrowers on the belief that they can at any time leave their business. Given such situations, women entrepreneurs are bound to rely on their own savings and loans from friends and relatives. Thus, women enterprises fail due to the shortage of finance. Next point, scarcity of raw material. Most of the women enterprises are plagued by the scarcity of raw material and necessary inputs. If they are able to procure the raw material, either it is at high price or available at a minimum discount. Next is stiff competition. Women entrepreneurs do not have organizational setup to pump in a lot of money for canvassing and advertisement. Thus, they have to face a stiff competition for marketing their products with both organized sector and their male counterparts. Such a competition ultimately results in the liquidation of women enterprises. Such a competition ultimately results in the liquidation of women enterprises. Next point is limited mobility. Unlike men, women mobility in India is highly limited due to various reasons. Cumbersome exercises involved in starting an enterprise, coupled with the official humiliating attitude towards women, compels them to give up an idea of starting an enterprise. Family ties. In India, it is mainly a woman's duty to look after the children and other members of the family. Man plays a secondary role in all of this. In case of married women, she has to strike a fine balance between her business and family. Her total involvement in family leaves little or no energy and time to devote for business. Support and approval of husbands seem necessary condition for women's entry into business. Accordingly, the educational level and family background of husbands positively influence women's entry into business activities. Lack of education. In India, around three-fifths, that is 60% of women, are still illiterate. Illiteracy is the root cause of socio-economic problems. Due to the lack of education and that too, qualitative education, women are not aware of business, technology and market knowledge. Also, lack of education causes low achievement motivation among women. Thus. This creates one type or other problems for women in setting up and running of business enterprises. Male dominated society. Male chauvinism is still the order of the day in India. The constitution of India speaks of equality between men and women. But in practice, women are looked upon as abla, that is weak in all respects. Women suffer from male reservations about a woman's role, ability and capacity and are treated accordingly. In nutshell, in the male-dominated Indian society, 
women are not treated equal to men this in turn serves as a barrier to women entry into business low risk bearing ability women in india lead a protected life they are less educated and economically not self dependent all these reduce their ability to bear risk involved in running an enterprise risk bearing is an essential requisite of a successful entrepreneur in addition to these problems inadequate infrastructural facilities shortage of power high cost of production social attitude low need for achievement and socio economic constraints also hold the women back from entering into business now let's discuss what the government is doing to overcome all these problems and to encourage women entrepreneurship a substantial transition from welfare to growth and development was seen in the 6 5 year plan it acknowledged the absence of women's access to resources as a crucial factor for the overall growth The 7-5 year plan highlighted the requirement of equality and empowerment between both men and women. So for the first time importance was placed on realistic and qualitative aspects such as self-confidence building, raising and generating awareness levels and skill development training for a better job. In the 1980s many programs were enacted for women under various sectors of agricultural production. poultry husbandry and small scale industries in 1990 the government launched programs for training and job generation to make women self confident and independent government took serious major steps in the aged 5 year plan such as increasing employment and women's activities the government also established female cooperation with complete financial support There have been establishments of khadi and village industries different schemes such as rozgar yojana enterprise programs have been launched Andhra Pradesh Lady Entrepreneurs Association was set up in 1993 to cultivate women's entrepreneurial skills and also give support in marketing of the product In the 9th 5 year plan the government has embraced a unique strategy called a women component plan it also allocated 30% of the government funds in all industries related to women which are as follows trade related entrepreneurship assistance and development scheme was implemented in 1998 to cultivate women's entrepreneurial skills in order to provide age relaxation Prime Minister Rozgar Yojana was revised in April 1999 in order to enable and encourage more women Swayam Jayanti Gram Swarozgar Yojana was introduced programs such as Mahila Vikas Mahila Udyam Nidhi and several other micro credit schemes were successfully launched to provide enough services for nidhi training and expansion of support and financial help Sydney sanctioned a micro credit scheme for the development of women entrepreneurs. Women Entrepreneur Consortium in India was established in India to help women entrepreneurs find creative and innovative and manufacturing or production and finance techniques. In order to empower the women entrepreneurs, a total net assistance of 80.4 million was allocated to Mahila Vikas Nidhi scheme. A huge number of agencies have been set up to assist women such as State Financial Corporation, the National Small Scale Industries Expansion Institute, District Industry Centers have also been set up by the government to organize lectures, girls college seminars. The 10th 5 year plan strives to support women by passing into action the recently passed National Women's Empowerment as well as assuring women and children survival. protection and development through right based approaches some of the schemes that are currently run by the government are stree shakti package for women entrepreneurs this proposal is given by most of the spi branches to females who have a 50% stake of a company or business ownership and have participated in the entrepreneurship development program which are run by the state agencies
Annapurna scheme. This scheme is designed for women who wish to establish food catering units and offers loans up to rupees 50,000 for this purpose. The loan can be used to purchase kitchen essentials, gas connections, raw materials, etc. and has a repayment period of 3 years. Bharatiya Mahila Bank Business Loan This bank loan is crucial for newly evolving women entrepreneurs trying to launch new ventures in the property loans, re retail sector, SME loans and micro loans. For manufacturing industries, the highest permissible loan amount is as high as 20 crores and a discount is also accessible to the extent of 0.25% at the interest rate and the interest rates that usually range from 10.15% or higher. Apart from these schemes, you can see the list of other schemes that are also functioning such as Mahila Vikas Nidhi, Indira Mahila Yojana, etc. So this was all about women entrepreneurship. I hope you all liked the video. For more videos, please subscribe our channel Panesha Tutor. Also, to avail full course of Paper 1 and Paper 2 Management, Commerce and Economics, please visit PanesiaTutor.com. Thank you very much.